Hi guys, this is Chris from Nintendo Gamer and I'm going to be teaching you how to draw your own Spanish fresco painting in less than 15 of your Earth minutes. Um, frescoes are very difficult to paint because people paint them right on the wall um, but I've taken this um, one from Spain, it's called Eke Homo uh, which isn't rude and isn't uh, uh, vulgar, it actually means behold the man and you'll be beholding my interpretation of this man once I've finished painting them. Um, you bring up your grid first of all, that helps you draw things, uh, draw the outline a bit easier and make it more accurate and we're going to go for paints because uh, painting is the tool of the gods. Um, someone said that once. I think it was the great Muhammad Ali. Um, okay so mixing colours can be a bit tricky. Try not to use black when you can because um, black as a colour doesn't really work too well when you mix it with stuff. Try use a dark blue instead. So here we're just going for a greenish colour using a large brush. Um, that's what they call it in the trade. And just painting and I believe this is known as the slapdash method um, made popular in Rome uh, during the Renaissance period which is when most paintings were done. So just slap it about, try and cover the general area. That's the noise it would make if you were doing it with a scrubbing brush. So that's your background. Then choose a different brush. Make... Just test it here. Do, do, do a kind of light colour here and a light colour down here. And then what you can do is if you use a dry brush, which is a brush with no colour on it at all, you can kind of blend it in, you see? It's all smooth. Now, let's go back to this colour and darken it a bit. Maybe put some blues in. Because as you can see in the background, there's it's not just a straight colour. There's bits of blue in there and bits of yellow. So we're going to put in some blue. Um, and then use a watery brush to kind of smudge it. This is a brush with, no, again, nothing on it, but put some water on it instead. See, some blue. Smudgy, smudgy, smudgy. Blip, blip, blip. Already it is beginning to take shape. Well, not yet. Now what to do now is dry your painting. That means um, the, all the paint that's on there already gets locked in. So if you mess up your drawing um, from this point on and try and rub out what you've painted, you'll, you'll rub out. The, the stuff that's already on there won't be rubbed out. So that's when you lock in stuff that you know is safe. So now we're going to paint the man. I believe he is Christ. Um... So darken it up with a bit of red. I say don't use black, but I'm immediately breaking my own rules because that's what a great artist does is break his own rules. So what, what you got a problem with that? Well, sorry, authority. Um, I'm using black paint. So yeah, just draw a general sketch. Use the thinnest brush available, imaginable and known to man and just sketch the general outline of the man. Who may or may not be Jesus. I'm now having second thoughts about saying that was Jesus. Sketch his general outline. Don't worry too much about detail yet, it's, the detail comes later on. Do his neckline. Very important. Possibly the most important thing in the painting. And there's his chin. His little rin chin chin. Perfect. Now we're going to make a new colour, put lots of reds in, darken it up a bit, because this is for his shawl, I believe they call it, or his shirt, more reds, but a black end, don't tell anyone, keep this between you and I, that I'm using black paint, and then, no, 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 that's too thin, you can use your See if you make a mistake you can use your cloth to rub it out and the paint underneath stays. Yeah, it's more like it's sun. Actually no, rub that out as well. Go for this. Yeah, we'll put a bit more water in it so it's more of a wash. You can put up to three layers of water on your brush to make it more washy. Um, so we'll go do that. This will make it easier to mix it in later on because we're going to put some blacks in. Um, as in the colour to kind of blend it in a bit 
because as you can see above the is real shawl is much darker than this one so bloop 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 and now we darken it up black 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 blue red black and then small brush again just do some black bits here Usually you would take a bit more time, but since I've set myself a 15 minute limit for this, we're going to do it a bit speedier. Now we're filling the brush just with pure water, and we're just going to slap dash the brush around and try and blur it up a bit. Now up and down, and then from side to side, just to smear it like a monkey would with its uh, produce at a zoo. And there you go, that's your shawl, more or less complete. Try it again, because you can't improve on perfection. I've learnt that. I learnt that the hard way. Now, onto the face, this visage. Darken it up a bit and put. I mean, this face has got quite a bit of yellow in it, a bit of green. The, the human. Many people think that human flesh is pink. Um, anyone who tells you that is a dullard and a braggart and is frankly mistaken. Real skin has more yellows, oranges in it, so that's what we're going for here. Always do the neck first. And everyone from um, Da Vinci to Tony Hart to Neil Buchanan knows that you start with the neck um, because that's the window to the heart. Just a few scrapes here. Sorry, I was stunned into silence there, but because I'm just amazed at my own handiwork. Um, yeah, a bit of black. Load, load up a small black brush with water and just kind of sketch around. Because this is to add shadow, apparently. And smear it in. Blip, 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 blip. Look at that. Have you ever seen a neck so realistic? I mean, I've seen plenty of necks in my time, believe you me. And then just use your, your cloth to dry, uh, to get rid of any excess neckage that shouldn't be where it is. Now, let's repeat that with the rest of his face. Just use, luckily you can store the colours you've already used, so let's go back to the same yellowish colour we used before and just scribble it on there. Blip, 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 blip. This is all in real time in case you think I'm speeding bits up. This is all as God intended <laughs> which is rather appropriate. So there we go and darken it up a bit again. A bit more water. There we go. dry painting again. So that's your face locked in. That face is not changing. Now, it's time for the, the difficult part. Plenty of blacks, plenty of reds, because believe it or not this hair is actually redder than it looks in the, the original fresco, because as you can see there's plenty of damage, uh, wear and tear I believe they call it, um, to this figure's face. So. His hair is actually a deep red colour like this, much like that of a Thundercat. So we're going to go around the top of his head, Thundercat style, right round his beard to make a sort of chin strap, almost like your man from Scribble Knots. Right round. He's got a bit of long hair. Don't judge him for that. He's, show me, he's just doing his thing. Water up a dark brush and again just smudge around it. And then we're going to be blurring it later on just to. Yeah, just to, to round it off well. Blur, blur, blur. Look at that, it's incredible. 
so I'll try to do a bit of neck detail here, but I don't really like it, so again I'll use a cloth and just rub round. Because the face is locked in and dried in, I can scrape out off some of this excess, make, give the face a more rounded shape. Clean away any stuff that I don't like. Around the sides. And this fresco is beginning to take shape. Now it's time for the face and this is a difficult bit so let's zoom right in. And stick the grid back on. Because the face is clearly the most important part of this painting because it tells so many stories. So we're going to go with black and that's it, maybe a bit of water. We don't want to go overboard with the detail, a tad of water. And now the eye, really carefully do this eye. That's right. Small strokes. And don't forget to leave a little hole for the pupil. And eyebrows. And the other eye, the positioning of the other eye is crucial. There we go. And again, a bit of space for the pupil. Another eyebrow. Most people have two eyebrows. I mean, I like to I like to st st uh, stick with some realism. I mean, I know a lot of people, your Salvador Dalis of the, of the world, like to go with more abstract stuff. But I like to keep it real. Um, I'm just telling. Basically, my art is the art I do is what I see on the streets every day. So um, I'm not going to front, as they say. Uh, now, time for the mouth. This important part. There we go. And finally. We have to give him a bit of a beard, because his beard goes over. That's, yeah. There we go. Now, just all that's left is to fill a brush with some water and just smear it over, just to blur the face a bit, because that's very important. You don't want jaggy facial features, uh, because when you go to give your lover a smooch, um, you'll cut their face up a mischief. And a bit of white for the dots in their eyes. And there we have it. And if I do say so myself, that is perfect. That is a perfect representation of Eke Homo, the Spanish fresco. Now dry your painting so that no human hands can alter it. And now you can save it. Little sleeping dog. Oh, finished. Pop back to the old uh, 3DS home menu. Nip over to your camera. Do do do. Go to view your photos. And there you have it, the finished masterpiece which you can now send to friends, family, even strangers because everyone appreciates good art. Um, yeah, I mean everyone does art from time to time and I'm no different, so thanks. <laughs>